Florida has an awful lot to be proud of out here, the way they withstood this furious charge. The 30-game home court winning streak is over for Xavier. Ohio State and Indiana coming up next. For my partner, Len Elmore, I'm Clay Matvick. So long from Cincinnati. Now, Big Ten Hoops, Terry Gannon and Dan Dockage. Terry Gannon along with Dan Dockage, good to have you along. We're going to look tonight, Dan, not only at the number two team of the nation, but one of the best, not only freshman players in the country, Jared Sullinger. Yeah, very physical, 17 and 10. He's exploded on the national scene. People talking about him for national player of the year. Watch how he uses his lower body. His dad, Satch, his high school coach, did a terrific job teaching this kid how to work for position with his legs and his lower body. Oh. Their Big Ten schedule. Indiana nine and five. They're nine and one at home, but that one loss earlier this week in their Big Ten opener to Penn State. And the Hoosiers open up in a zone on the first possession. Deep corner three, in and out. Here comes Indiana on the run. Halls gives it off to one of the freshmen. Victor Oladipo inside and good. Derek Elston, the sophomore from Tipton, Indiana. Well, Derek Elston is a key in this ballgame. He started the last six games. He is an athletic kid. He can shoot the three. They just haven't gotten much out of him. Fought an illness going out to Nevada, Las Vegas, to play a tournament out there. Hasn't been the same since. Butchers come in having lost three in a row. Diebler, baseline, kicking it off to Buford. Pump fake 15 footer up and good. William Buford, the junior from Toledo, struggled a bit with his shooting. Last game had a good one though. Back out to Oladipo on the break. Well, Oladipo's the most athletic guy. Indiana wants to push the tempo. You're seeing this zone here, Terry. This is an odd zone. They use Watford on top. The way to attack it is get a guy in the middle and then work the baseline. Buford another one this time beyond the arc so he starts two for two or just shoot over it you can do that <laughs> against the zone just lift up and knock it in you mentioned Oladipo Victor a freshman from Hyattsville Maryland from that great program DeMatha and started against Penn State at 14 points and four rebounds in that game getting another start tonight you know the coach is talking about him they talk about being at DeMatha and how important winning is to the kid and how in every drill he fights to win that drill Bad Mata now in his seventh year at the helm for Ohio State and with a team this year that he is just having a blast coaching these young kids the great freshman class coming in maybe the best in the country and certainly playing as advertised now told me David Lighty is the hardest working kid every day in practice that he's ever had Buford again yeah from the other corner this time another three for the junior. The baseline is the weakness against Tom Crean's zone. This is kind of a hybrid zone, a little bit of man in it, a little bit of zone, but the baseline is a real weakness. Newford with all eight on the board so far for Ohio State. The kick, and it'll stay at this end. Now, Newford averaging 13 points per game. They got so many ways to beat you offensively. Yeah, and this is no surprise. He's over 1,000 points for his career. Uh, he's a kid that the NBA targeted and had him come out and play with the USA Select team this summer. Yeah, that experience practicing against so many NBA players who went on to win the World Championship then, big part is of his preparation for this year. Wasn't easy to inbound the basketball. It never is against Ohio State. Ohio State, watch this the rest of this game. Jordan Hulls lets it fly a deep three and cleared by Dallas Lauderdale. Ohio State is the most difficult team in the country to inbound the basketball against. They pressure no matter whether it's under the basket, sideline, no matter where it is, they look for steals on inbounds. They've been the most difficult to do a lot of things against so far. Number two in the nation. Some people around the country starting to make an argument that they could be the best team in the country by the end of the year. Lauderdale leaves it. Sullinger using his body inside the foul and a chance for a three-point play. Sullinger gets the ball in the middle, and he always stays low. Watch his left hip here. Watch his left hip go into Derek Elston. Jared Sullinger is just too strong for guys, but a lot of guys are too strong for guys, and they play weak. He's too strong, but he plays strong. You're strongest with your lower body. He understands that. He leads with his lower body and is almost impossible 
to stop when he gets the ball in that position. This is a player who's been on the mat since he was in junior high. I mean, colleges knew about him back then. Terry, this is true. When he was eight years old, I was in his house recruiting his brother, <laughs> you were JJ. one of those. He comes in from, like, playing outside. And I told his dad, Satch, I said, Satch, I'll take him. Give me him. <laughs> his father, a longtime high school coach, coached him at Northland High School. Nice move along the baseline over Depot, another deuce. And Indiana down by five now in the early going. This is a problem for Indiana. When you watch Indiana, Ola Depot plays harder than everybody else. You should never have a guy that plays harder than everybody else. Everybody, Indiana would be better served if everybody played as hard as Ola Depot. Iowa State has hit their last four from the floor. Tom Pritchard now in off the bench for Indiana. A little more size for Tom Green. Buford feeling it right now. Five on the shot clock for Diebler. Great three-point shooter, the all-time leader at Ohio State, maybe by the end of the year in the Big Ten. Well, if you're going to play zone against Ohio State, the guy you have to know is John Diebler. And Verdell Jones just fell asleep on Diebler's side and wasn't able to get out quick enough. Ohio State three of four beyond the arc. Lauderdale high into the air to clear the miss of Ola Depot. Buckeyes getting anything they want offensively right now. Whistle away from the ball. You're going to call Pritchard inside the body against that man. Jared Sullinger when we come back. Dan's going to break down their favorite way to get the big fellow the basketball in the half-court setting. Hi, I'm Reese Davis. The journey has begun for the Capital One Cup. At the end of the school year, one men's and one women's Division I athletics program will win this Covington Award given to the school with the best on-field performance in NCAA Division I championships. Each winning school will receive $200,000 to fund student-athlete graduate-level scholarships. Follow your school and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com. Meet me by the sea again Past the point the shoreline bends Where the sand is soft and warm And hangs upon your golden arm It's This weekend, get two free at Joseph A. Bank. Buy any suit, sport coat, or outerwear and get two free. That's buy one, get any two free. Mix and match all suits, sport coats, top coats, even leather jackets. Buy one, get any two absolutely free at Joseph A. Bank. Now through Sunday. The 2011 Discover Iron Cole, Monday on ESPN. 14-6, the Buckeyes on top on the road. Their Big Ten opener against Indiana. Jared Sullinger averaging 18 points per game. Dan, take us through our coach's chalkboard, how he likes to get it done offensively. Well, when Indiana goes man-to-man, -man, you're going to see this move a lot. Jared Sullinger likes the right block, but they start him on the left elbow. He will set a down screen. The ball will be passed to his side. The five-man, Dallas Lauderdale, will set two screens, a flare screen and then an on-ball screen. When the on-ball screen is occurring and the ball is brought to the right, Sullinger comes off a double back screen and the ball is fed to him in his favorite spot, which is on the right block. Sullinger very light on his feet, as he can tell by that, uh, just floating in the lane. When you look at him, he is huge in person, but he moves like a guard. They would love to start their offense with Sullinger inside. But this is how versatile this team is. They come out, they face the zone, and guess what? They're three of four beyond the arc. Diebler the air ball this time, but they're doing it on the perimeter right now. Well, they've moved the ball. They found the baseline. Well schooled. you got to give Thad Mata's coaching staff a lot of credit for exploiting the weakness in Indiana's zone, which is along the baseline. Fredell Jones using the screen out top. The pull up, a little bit short. Sullinger with the body and the rebound. Aaron Kraft now on running the point for Ohio State. Another one of those freshmen from Finley, Ohio. Diebler, the deep corner three, line drive good. Tom Crean is going crazy with his team. 
because John Diebler runs to the left block and he's been running there for left corner and he's been running there for four years <laughs> drilling threes and no one was within 10 feet of him. he's gonna make a substitution it's one way you call your players over and say you know this guy is gonna be the all-time three-point shooter in Big Ten history <laughs> would you like to guard him right now Hulls had nowhere to go but there gets the roll up and good Jordan Hulls the sophomore from South High School right here in Bloomington Jordan Hall's a kid that just wins. He's too small. He, uh, he's too slow. He's not athletic enough. All he does is win. He's been terrific for Indiana this year. Buford left wide open at the top of the key, and Tom Crean will not be happy on this possession defensively again. It doesn't matter the zone you play. You, you went one, three, one, two, three, three. It does not matter. What matters is how fast you move in the zone, and Indiana is moving very, very slowly on the perimeter of their zone defense. You don't want to make your way back to the huddle right now if you're a Hoosier, to hear it from Tom Crean. Ohio State, five of six from beyond the arc so far. For four years, John Diebler has been running to the left corner. You're going to see him right there. He's been doing this his entire career, and there are five guys on Indiana that don't recognize this in their shoot around. Tom Crean talked about Diebler in the left corner. In Ohio State's next shoot around, Iowa's going to be talking about Diebler in the left corner. Ohio State with five three pointers, IU with only four total field goals so far. More coming your way on ESPN, the home court of college hoops. You got Oklahoma State and Gonzaga on ESPN 2 at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Gonzaga, geez keeps taking on the Big 12 folks and I know they've lost a few but uh, Mark Few always playing a tough schedule early in the season not well, conference -wise. well they beat Baylor and yep. they beat Xavier so they're on a bit of a roll their losses not too bad when you look at a San Diego State number seven Kansas State Illinois Washington State Notre Dame Stephen Gray the big question mark there for them with back spasms will he be healthy holes had it taken away by Kraft Good pass up the floor to Lighty, who is fouled by Will Sheehy, the freshman from Florida who just came on for Indiana. Well, this is a terrific pass by a kid that makes terrific passes. Aaron Kraft, valedictorian of his high school, star quarterback, a good enough point guard to play at Ohio State. I want to talk about Lighty for a second. I, David Lighty, to me, is one of the ten best players, if not one of the five best players in the Big Ten. And more than that, Terry, He's seen pros. You know, he came in with Conley and Odin and, and Kufus was here and Mullen. And he's a pro maybe. But you know what? He's put everything aside and he's made it okay for Jared Sullinger to be the star. Some guys in their fifth year would be selfish. David Lighty is anything but selfish. On some teams, he would be a problem if he had, no a, if, if he had a different outlook and a different uh, disposition. But he doesn't. The only guy left from that 07 title game. Yeah, and he doesn't care about it. He just wants to win. Holes with a three. Maybe that'll get the Hoosiers going. Shooting 54% so far from three-point range. Okay. Jordan Halls is one of those guys when he misses, you're surprised. You know, there are guys you don't let shoot. There are guys that, okay, they made, and there are guys that you're shocked when they miss. Buford inside out. There is Lighty, the pull-up. Indiana's got to find a way to stop Ohio State at the other end. Buckeyes scoring on eight of their last 11 possessions. Walking violation called. On Verdell Jones, Tom Crean, now in his third year as the head coach at Indiana. In some ways, though, his second full year. You can almost write off that first year. The cupboard was absolutely bare. Yeah, it, it was, and he's building it. And, and the talent level is much better, obviously, now than it was, and it's going to get better. Indiana fans are a little impatient with a couple things. Number one, you know, they want to win, obviously. Number two, the offense. Too much dribbling for the taste of IU people, but IU fans have to be patient here because this is a building process, and like you said, they're only in year two, basically. Jeremiah Rivers just off the bench, son of Doc, comes up with the steal. He's just come on along with Maurice Creek, the talented sophomore who uh, was injured last year, still trying to get 100% off of that knee injury. Broke his kneecap, and it's a year-long injury, and we're just past a year. Pulls a deep three that time. Run down. But on the line, back to the Buckeyes. Yeah, Creek, maybe as much mentally, too. It takes a while. You know this, Dan. Come back from a major knee injury. It may be healthy, the actual knee, but psychologically, you're not fully confident in it. There's no question. When you see him out here, you're going to see him limp. 
But I will say this, you will never see him complain. He plays hard. He doesn't worry about his injury. He just competes. Got a whistle away from the ball and a foul on the Buckeyes. Just whistled to Sean Thomas, the freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, his first. Sean Thomas, third all-time leading scorer in the history of Indiana high school basketball. This tells you how good Sullinger is. Any other program in the Big Ten, Deshaun Thomas would be the guy as a freshman. No question. He, he's the second best freshman in the Big Ten, and he's the second best freshman on his own team. Holes inside out to Sheehy. Pull up beyond the arc. That's a three. Will Sheehy, freshman from Stewart, Florida, an athletic player. He and Oladipo have given this Hoosier offense a charge. And the crowd finally into this. Students not on campus, a lot of the alums, a lot of people who don't normally get a ticket are here for this. Buford tells him, take a seat. That's How a good has he been? That's a pro. When you go to an NBA game, you see guys that look like William Buford. 13 in the game already for Buford, and that's what he averages. And the lead back to double digits. Sheehy up and under against Thomas. He starts the break with the outlet. Leaves it for Sullinger. Holes, maybe the bravest man in the Big Ten on that play. Steps in and takes a charge on Jared Sullinger. How about that? William Buford's going to come off a down screen with the crowd going. Pretty good pass by Diebler, but the step back in the lane, that kid is a pro. I'm going to take a quick dip. Okay. Keep your head in the game with NFL Mobile and never miss a touchdown with NFL Red Zone every Sunday afternoon. You're picturing me as Adrian Peterson again, aren't you? <laughs> Don't be silly, Adrian Peterson. Stay focused. Get NFL Mobile only on Verizon. Dine and drive Sorrento's. Just $2.99 a month with no money down. Only at the all-new Best Kia Highway 153 at Easley. New 2011 Sorrento's automatic with air. Sign and drive $2.99 per month, no money down for just 36 months. The all-new Best Kia Highway 153 at Easley. No small print games or gimmicks. Leave the checkbook at home and sign and drive 2011 Sorrento's $2.99 a month. Only from the all-new Best Kia Highway 153 at Easley under the water tower. Open late seven days a week, including Sundays after church. Everyone knows that Hobby Connection is South Carolina's largest hobby shop and RC racing facility. And everyone knows that Hobby Connection has a full selection of remote control planes that fly higher and cars that go faster. And everyone knows that they are custom made by you. And everyone knows that Hobby Connection has something for every kid, including the big kids like that. Hmm, now how do I get mom to know? The Hobby Connection, located on Highway 123 in Easley. On this New Year's Eve, we welcome you back to Bloomington, Indiana, 24 to 14. Ohio State with the lead over the Hoosiers. And Dan, you just praised William Buford. How about this last break? Well, we praised him. Now we've got to talk about him. William Buford makes a bad play here. He should have taken that ball all the way to the elbow. Jared Sullinger is in a bad spot. When you're in transition with your big man, the big man should only do one of two things, catch it, lay it in, or catch it, and at max, one dribble and lay it in. William Buford gave the ball to Jared Sullinger way too early. Credit Jordy Halls for getting back, but Buford put Sullinger in a bad spot. Yeah, Sullinger picks up the foul. It wasn't his fault. It was Buford who put him in that position. There was nothing he could do. Tom Crean made the move to go to his bench. Hall's on the bench right now. And Rivers and Maurice Creek came in a few minutes ago. The last three minutes for Ohio State, just one field goal and three turnovers. Well, for Indiana, with Jeremiah Rivers in the game and William Buford already going with 13 points, this is what Rivers is in the game for. Jeremiah Rivers has to be a defensive stopper here on the other end for, for Indiana. Elston almost walked. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Sets the screen for Jones, and the offensive foul called. He was moving on it. 
This that, has been that's a, two. Yeah, it's been a problem for Indiana all year. The illegal screen on top. This this time, Elston does it. Capo Bianco's done it. It's been a real issue for Tom Crean and his staff. And and again, it goes back to what Buford did too. The ball handler's got to wait for the screen to be set. It's in part the ball handler's fault. No question. You can't be moving as a screener. You have to have a set spot. Thomas wanted it on the block. Buford can't get it to him. Again, for Indiana, the matchup to watch is Jeremiah Rivers. He's a senior. He's a fifth-year senior. He's on the team to guard guys like Buford. It'll be an interesting matchup moving forward. Bobby Capobianco, a sophomore from Loveland, Ohio, comes off the bench now for Tom Creek. Ebler guarded by Creek, who also struggled in that opener against Penn State. He was 0 for 5 from beyond the arc in that game. Buford, red hot tonight, halfway down and out. It's a tough lineup here for Indiana. I, I was just going to ask points. you, where's your offense going to come yeah, from right now? It's going to have to come from Maurice Creek, or it's going to have to come from something late with a shot clock and a ball screen. Creek, one of the nation's top freshmen last year until that injury. Jones, right through the hands of Sheehy. Out of bounds. It'll stay here. Fortunate that Kraft got that ball. Fortunate for the Hoosiers. Hall's back in. David Lighty back in. Watch a straight cut here on top from Capo Bianca, number 23 at the right elbow. Either he or she, he making a beeline, setting up their cut, then cutting to the front of the rim. Watford set to check back in, beats the horn. So he comes in, she, he takes a seat in a, a bigger lineup and a more punch offensively. That type of lineup now on for the Hoosiers. Jones gets away from the double. And they're going to call the foul. I believe they got Lighty on the reach. We are going to have all day, Terry, four counts, meaning it's so difficult to get the ball. It's the second four count that Ohio State has gotten to on inbounds plays. They, they Just watch this. Watch how intent they are on not allowing the ball to be entered. Why? Length? Because they work on it. They, they, they take it very serious. They switch everything. They take it very, very serious. Can't get the ball in right now and have to call a timeout. So Jones... Calls the timeout, and Tom Crane, along with Thad Mata, talking their clubs on the sideline. On every inbounds, every screen, they switch. So there you see Lighty switching the holes. Now, Indiana's doing a terrible job here of working to get open. But this is something that Ohio State has deemed as important. And if you deem it as important, you work on it. And guess what? If you work on it, you usually get pretty good at it. Full slate today on New Year's Eve and Saturday morning. ESPN 2's got the Big East. It's West Virginia taking on Marquette. College basketball at ESPN 2. New Year's Day starting at 11 Eastern. Also available on ESPN3.com. So we have the preseason where almost everyone agrees the Big Ten is the top conference in the country. But right now you've got the Big East with five teams in the top ten. Yeah, you do. And they also won six national tournaments and a couple more teams came in second. I... I don't know 12 through 16, Terry, in the Big East, but I, I know I know that if UConn was picked 10th, 11th, or 12th, whatever they were, that's a pretty good ball play. And the conference schedule's just getting underway right now. They're going to back Lauderdale up a bit. Yeah, good move by Thad Mata. It's so tight over there. You can see the feet of the Ohio State kids. There's maybe, maybe, maybe two feet of room, and you put Lauderdale up there. If yeah, Fad is saying, hey, what's wrong? He's fine right there. Full shot clock as they do get it in. Watford has to get involved here, Terry. He has no shots to this point. Kraft trying to body up on Hall is going to pick up his first, Aaron Kraft. And if you're Fad Mata, though, a foul like that, you don't mind that much. No, but one of the things when you're coaching and you know Indiana's going to have trouble to score, you do not want anybody, you do not want Indiana getting into the one and one because that's an easy score for them. You want to make them work and have to run half court offense every time down. A 16 foul on Ohio State, so they are in the bonus. Lauderdale called, trying to defend inside. That was a good move by Indiana. They brought, they kind of inverted their offense. They brought holes to the right elbow and ducked in Watford against Buford. Not yet in 
to Bonus was on Buford that time. Watford, well, they double right away on that inbound, don't they? The length, too. Tried to skip past. Lighty took it right away. Thrown right behind him. Kraft has had a tough start to this one. Aaron Kraft, as we said earlier, 63 to 25 assists to turnovers. He never throws the ball away, and he had a layup because Indiana did not get back in proper position, just threw it out of bounds. Sometimes the Big Ten's different than playing Florida Gulf Coast or Tennessee Martin. And that is the question right now. If you're Ohio State, you're, you're an Ohio State fan, you love that you're 13-0, and 0, but the real test begins tonight. Great block by Lighty. Watford gets it back, goes back to work. Holes. Another deep three. Jordan Holes from three-point range. He's got a couple of those tonight. And Watford stayed with it, and Aaron Kraft fell asleep on the backside. He got watching the play. Now, you can watch the play on some of these guys from Indiana, but you can't on Jordan Hall. Good show by Capobianco. Defense picking up a bit for the Hoosiers. Oh, the Depot set to check in for Indiana. Debrew left alone. And he will make you pay anytime you give him any daylight. Terry, the defense was picking up, the crowd was into it, and he was looking dead at us when he came off that ball screen and looked so calm. Now, you're talking about a kid who's won state championships. He's a 1,200-point-a-game scorer. He's going to be the all-time leader in three-point shooting. That's just an experienced guy. None of, none of what's going on peripherally is, peripherally is going to affect that kid. And with all the talent they have, the young talent, the freshmen coming in, it's Diebler, it's Lighty, that they both make them better. You have 3,000-point scores right now yep. on top of a kid in Sullinger that may be the player of the year in the country. Especially, Dan, and you've been around this league for a long time, when you go on the road early in the schedule. Lauderdale, the dunk on the finish off the nice dish. Dallas Lauderdale emphatically as we go to break. The number two team in the nation, the Buckeyes, on the road to open up their Big Ten schedule. Lighty, Lauderdale, double-digit lead. Now, more than ever, you want to keep your loved ones safe and secure. Give them the gift of financial security from New York Life. We've been protecting families for over 165 years. New York Life, the company you keep. Right now at H&R Block, you could get up to $9,999, and you could get it fast. Just bring in your tax information and get a refund anticipation check. You pay nothing out of pocket. H&R Block, never settle for less. The champ is here! Whoa. Are you ready for the Pro Glide Challenge? I said, are you ready for the Pro Glide Challenge? John Cena! This is Gillette's newest razor, the Gillette Fusion Pro Glide. It'll give you less tug and pull. Feel great, John Cena! Smooth, clean cut. You feel great? I feel great. You feel good? I feel good. We're glad. We're glad. Take the Fusion Pro Glide Challenge. Go crush that garbage can! There you go! Sam Adams, the peak of its freshness, there's nothing better. Our mission is to make sure when you crack open that bottle of Sam Adams, you're getting the freshest beer you can possibly get. If it's not fresh, you buy it back. We spent so much time selecting the ingredients and using traditional brew processes. We want to make sure everybody gets a fresh Sam. You have dreams for your children. Don't let times like these stand in the way of them. Protect your family with the gift of financial security, backed by the highest possible ratings for financial strength. New York Life, the company you keep. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few, the proud, Ryan Burr in studio over on ESPNU. It's USF at UConn. Huskies coming off their loss to Pittsburgh on Monday. And this is Hugh Robertson throwing down for South Florida. Currently up by five on the Huskies with 558. That game on ESPNU. Coming up 730 on ESPN. It is the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Steve Spurrier in South Carolina. Taking on Jimbo Fisher and Florida State. Terry and Coach Dockage. 
Ryan, thank you. Back here in Bloomington, 29-17 Ohio State. They've scored five unanswered points in the last 50 seconds after IU closed to within seven. The trap along the wing, but the foul called on Ohio State, and I believe they got Kraft. Whitey arguing as well. And Whitey called for his second. Well, out of the timeout, out of the inbounds, they got the ball on the side. Uh, you see a, anything? I, I'll <laughs> say Ed Hightower had a better view than we did. Let's go that way. And don't argue with Ed Hightower, right? It's been a while, uh, around a long time here. 16 fouls, so they are in the bonus the rest of the way from this point. Indiana against Penn State, competitive in that game, but to lose one on your home floor to open up the Big Ten. And then to come in and play the number two team in the nation in the next game, that's a tall order for Tom Crean's club. It, it really is. And Penn State had lost by 10 at home to Maine. And, you know, Indiana coming off a road, a tough road trip in Vegas. Kind of expected to win that. But Jeff Brooks for Penn State was terrific in the game. Taylor Battle hit some big shots. Penn State just, truthfully, Penn State just played harder and hit shots when they had to hit shots. Made plays down the stretch, and IU did not. Yeah. Elston out top. And the reach called on the Buckeyes. Buford whistled for a second. And the seventh team foul. This is what Thad Mata did not run. Indiana running half-court offense. They haven't been that effective. But now, seven minutes to go, any bump is going to be called. You're going to put a team that's struggling offensively at the line. Thad Mata and the Buckeyes. 29 and 8 last year, 14 and 4 in the Big Ten, shared the Big Ten title, three way tie at the top. This year coming in, for what it's worth, picked to finish second behind Michigan State, who's lost some tough ones so far. Tough schedule for the Spartans so far, but the Buckeyes have played themselves into a position where some people think they could play in the Final Four this year. Ed Hightower telling Thad Mata to take a seat. He's also telling his assistant coaches to take a seat. Referees will listen to the head coach, but they have no interest in hearing it from anybody else on that side. Spoken like a former assistant coach. Both. And a head coach, that's right. Whistle out front. Elston called for the reach. That is three on Derek Elston, the sophomore from Tipton, Indiana. And Tom Crean decides to bring in Tom Pritchard. You know, Pritchard's a kid that when he was a freshman, he a averaged nine start. and a half points. He was double doubles, and now he's down to a point and a half. He's lost confidence, Terry, in his game because he is so uncomfortable at the free throw line. Like he's one for ten at the foul line, and he's afraid to do other things because it'll put him at the foul line. It's the first time I've ever heard of something. You think like it's that. had that much of an effect on his confidence? Overall, talked to his dad, he said it. I talked to the coaches, he said it. He said that has really affected him. Sullinger taking Pritchard right to the hoop right now. Jared Sullinger just not rushing, not hurrying, but using his body. He's got five in the game. Watford, he's got to figure out a way to be a little more aggressive offensively. They ran one thing for him where they got him on the block and it was a good move. Now everything else in this game for Watford has been on the perimeter and Ohio State's defenders are too quick for him. He's got two points in the game. He averages 17, their leading score, and he does. Comes off that screen, set up by Hulls and knocks down the three. Well, he's the guy. For them to play, for Indiana to play in this game, down the stretch of this game, he has to have a big night. The double, Sullinger finding Thomas, freshman to freshman, and the whistle. Underneath. Well, Jared Sullinger is a guy who's used to being down here. He's been on a block since he was about eight years old. And you see, he clears help, uses the dribble, spins, and then always going towards the basket. He is never fading away. And when you watch him go towards the basket, he leads with his body, so the body gets the contact. His wrist stays under the ball. That's why he's able to finish through contact. And Danny follows that possession up with the next possession where the double team comes right away. And what's he do? He finds Deshaun Thomas underneath quickly. Deshaun Thomas made a really nice play. When there's a double, the next guy has to get to the front of the rim. Deshaun Thomas did. 
Got two free throws. Pretty veteran move by a freshman. Buckeyes scoring on their last four trips. Watford turn around underneath. Uh uh. Sullinger, one handed rebound. Buford, who had the blazing start to this game, had it. their first eight points, draws the foul, will go to the free throw line. Well, from this angle, Jared Sullinger looked like he was 15 feet in the air grabbing that last rebound. And there were guys around him, and many times when you see guys around players, the ball gets tipped out of their hands or knocked away, knocked out of bounds. Not him. When he went up for that last rebound, it was his rebound, and there was nobody touching. Buford to miss. Pritchard picked up his second foul. Jeremiah Rivers comes in. Jones, along with Maurice Creek for Tom Creek. Good move last time by Indiana, putting Christian Watford on the ground. And he was able to get a really good shot. And I think if they keep going to that, he'll be effective. Jordan Seibert, a freshman checks in for the Buckeyes. Now you look at Ohio State's lineup. They're not only versatile, a number of different players can handle the basketball. They are long and they are big at every position. Even inside, as Sullinger goes 6'9", and Lauderdale goes 6'9". They're not 6'11", 7-footers, but they play bigger than 6'9". They are all, they all look the same, like Diebler. Diebler, you think, is just a kid that shoots. He's a long kid. James gets hit, knocks down the three. He'll go to the line for another one. Cybert comes off the bench and picks up the foul. Well, this is the new point guard moves in basketball. Drive under the basket and then play out of it. Steve Nash has made that very popular. You see Jeremiah Rivers, he went under the basket, kicked it, and on the second pass, Verdell Jones with a, able to step into his shot for a four-point attempt. And has a chance to make it, who knows, a six-point possession. Not this time. That ball came out of Maurice Creek's hand dead right. Now over anxious Pritchard on the show and a little too aggressive. He picks up his third, so he's got three. Elston already on the bench with three. Temple Bianco has to come in, and Pritchard takes a seat. Getting back to Ohio State and their length, you see Diebler and Seibert at half court. And the first thing you notice on both of them is how long their arms are. The Whitey's 6'5", Diebler 6'6", Buford 6'5", and that's before you get to the post players. Offensive foul called will go the other way. And Jeremiah Rivers still down. But Jeremiah Rivers just put his head down. And you can see that right arm. That's the easiest call for an official in terms of block or charge. Watch his right arm here extend and push Diebler out of the way. That's, that's as easy as it gets for an official. Now Rivers... Still down on the floor. Jeremiah's had a nice start to this season, too. And he's not a guy who's going to come out and knock down five threes, although he's capable at times shooting the basketball, but kind of settled into his role this year. He did not lead last year like Tom Crean expected him to lead. Tom was very disappointed in Jeremiah Rivers, and Jeremiah had a tough summer with, with Tom Crean, but this year... Is, has been a 180 for him. He has accepted his role. He has tried to teach younger kids, and consequently, he has played better. Senior transfer from Georgetown. Picks up his first foul and will take a seat. If you're Ohio State here, you have to go down on the block and get the ball to Sullinger here. They've, they've got a funny lineup here. Seabird, they... Thomas, three freshmen. Kraft running the point for the Buckeyes. Seibert gives off to Diebler. Capobianco absolutely fronting Sullinger. They get it to him anyway. Swing it. Seibert knocks down the jumper. Great side-to-side -side ball movement from the Buckeyes. And good defense by Indiana. They knew who they had to take away. And as you mentioned, Capobianco fronting did a terrific job. 
but too much ball movement by Ohio State. But that's what it opens up when you have to front a dangerous post player. Kraft called for the foul long way from the hoop. Aaron's second. Well, the ball's going to go into Sullinger, and Sullinger sees the help, and Ohio State never has a problem finding the net. In talking to Thad Mata today, we were discussing how this team doesn't have an ego. Nobody cares if they score. Nobody cares if Sullinger gets 20 and you get two. And that was a perfect example of it. Which is very rare, especially when you have a mix of veterans and talented freshmen who are getting so much publicity. There's no question. And as I said earlier, you have a guy like Lighty in his fifth year or even Diebler, you know, guys that could be looking to better themselves, their own resume for the NBA, and, and they don't. They just play for team. Bill Jones, the junior from Champaign, Illinois, came into the game needing 52 points to hit 1,000 for his career. 10-point Buckeye lead. Diebler around the screen. Indiana, which opened up in that zone, playing man-to-man -man as of late. Sullinger thought about the three for a moment, using his body a little bit out of control, out of bounds. To keep it at this end, and the crowd will let them know how displeased they are with the call. Buckeye basketball when we come back with a 10-point lead on the road. Only the best make it to the Super Bowl. That's why Papa John's is the official pizza sponsor of Super Bowl 45. Papa's in the house. Now through Super Bowl Sunday, you can get any large Papa John's pizza for just $10. Made from vine ripened tomatoes. That's what he's tasted. Get any large for just $10, even specialty pizzas. Order now at the new PapaJohns.com. Papa's in the house, and we'll see you Super Bowl Sunday. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, yeah! This is going to be quite the ride. Rolling Stone Rings Tron is a high-style adventure. It's absolutely mind-blowing. What am I supposed to do? Survive. Tron has it all. It's spectacular. A great story that takes us to places we've never been. Out there! There's a new world! Time Magazine declares visually arresting. It's the 3D movie event of the year. I don't think this is a good idea. You're probably right. Maybe your small business isn't so small. You think big, dream big, have big ideas, and Charter Business offers the tools you need to find big success. Internet, phone, and TV. So you can reliably connect with customers and achieve bigger results, which is a big win for any small business. Save 20% or more on Charter Business Internet and phone and get Charter Business TV for free. Call 877-BIZBUNDLE today. Benson Nissan and Easley says year-end clearance. It's a real year-end clearance. Look at these deals. 2011 Versa 1.8S hatchback. MSRP 15425 Now clearance price just 11588 Or the all-new 2011 Jew was $20,000. Now clearance price to just 19788 And we can offer just 2.9% financing for 60 months. At Benson Nissan Easley, everything we have is clearance price. I'm Chris Crosby. I not only guarantee it, I stand behind every great deal. Brian Burns Studio coming up at the half. I'll be joined by Miles Simon. Michigan State struggled in the non-conference. Today they trailed Minnesota at the half. Could they come back and get a win? UConn lost to Pitt on Monday. How would they respond with USF in their house? Plus, it's bowl season. The Sun Bowl, Notre Dame and Miami, a one-sided game. We'll tell you which side dominated. That's coming up at the half. Terry and Coach, we'll see you in a few. All right, Ryan, seen a few minutes, three minutes, 48 seconds of game time, that is. Speaking of UConn, by the way, I know you checked out that UConn uh, women's game against Stanford last night. The streak is over. That was shocking. I mean, Jimmy Dykes, with about four minutes to go, said that Coach Oriyama had told Maya Moore to go to the foul line, go to the rim, and out of the timeout, she shot a three. As soon as that happened, I thought, okay, they're done. And they were. Deshaun Thomas wouldn't give up. Got his own miss back, and he has a chance for three. Deshaun Thomas knows his way around the basket. I mean, we've been talking about Jared Sullinger, but remember this kid, third all-time leading scorer. You know, he reminds me of this going back, the late Wayman Tisdale. Yeah. Just had a knack for getting the ball in the basket, shoot it to about 18, working on his three-point shot. 
He's got a frame like Wayman Tisdale, too, that, that he's going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah, just another kid that that has a real sense for how to play basketball. It's a good move by Indiana going to the block. He lost it there, but that's where Indiana has to go. Sullinger has just taken two shots. He's made them both so far. That's way off from Thomas. Quick shot and perhaps didn't need it. The pull-up, creep, knocks it down. They really need him to get his confidence back. He had 31 last year against Kentucky as a freshman. And then, as we talked about, broke his kneecap. And the doctor said this is going to be at least a year. We're right at the year now. Great entry pass into Sullinger, knocked down underneath. Slow to get up, but the big fella is up. A reminder, Ohio State taking on Arkansas. Now the Buckeyes in action. And you get all the, all the attention that has surrounded the five players suspended for the first five games next year. But they will play, Terrell Pryor included, in the bowl game. The All-State Sugar Bowl on ESPN Tuesday night. Everybody signed their paperwork. Their, you think? Their pledges to play. <laughs> to play next year, to come back. <laughs> yeah, Jim Trestle saying uh, you got pledges for those players coming back next year. In order to play in the bowl game. Sollinger at the free throw line. 72% this year so far. At the 40 point effort. Earlier this season against IUPUI had 30 points, 19 rebounds against South Carolina in a game I think made a lot of people realize just how good Ohio State was. I had Ohio State against Michigan State, Terry. I, I did the game. And South Carolina, I'm sorry, South Carolina against Michigan State. South Carolina was pretty good. And then I watched South Carolina take on Ohio State, and they had yeah. no chance. Yeah. It was it was a dismantle. And mostly from the defensive side thing, and that's where I think Ohio State has really improved from last year. Uh, Evan Turner's gone, and, and Sullinger has come in and provided, but I think their defense has really improved. Look at it, 44 points they gave up to Florida State, 57 to South Carolina. All right, so Indiana doing the job on the inbound. Forcing the timeout right now, and uh, they'll talk things over with two minutes and 46 seconds left. So 42-29. Jared Sullinger will beat you a number of different ways, but he uses that frame. That's what he starts with. 6'9", 280 pounds, but he's got skill. He went to the foul line 23 times. When you try to front him, he moves you up the lane, as we've seen. When you play behind him, he backs you down. Remember, this is the son of a coach, and his dad is a big guy, like his dad is every bit as big as Jared is, and he knows how to coach post guys, and he's done a terrific job with his son in knowing how to play in the post. Here's the question. So many people would say, all right, is he a one-and-done player? Not only do you have the normal decision to be made, but think about the collective bargaining agreement, which has not yet been reached in the NBA. Do you come out next year? Well, he's a one-and-done talent, and he's been one-and-done in terms of productivity, but I think all of that is up in the air with the collective bargaining. Yeah. Hoosiers get it back, down by 13 with two and a half left here in the first. Offensively, where do you go if you're Indiana? If you're Indiana, you try to drive the ball, create a foul situation. Well, the depot does just that. Hey, coaching still here. <laughs> well, they were smart. They drove it towards Jordan Halls. And Jordan Halls is a, is a knock it out shooter, so you force the defense to make a choice, which leaves Oladipo one on one. and good enough to go get a five. What do you think of Victor Oladipo, the freshman from DeMatha, had the big game against Penn State, averaging about eight points per game? I think he's been terrific here. His energy, he's the leading offensive rebounding guy on a team that has some big guys. Uh, he started this whole deal of him having a nice freshman season in the exhibition season. Indiana was going to get beat by Ferris State, and he... Hit a four-point play, made a big block at the end, scored five, seven points in overtime, and he's carried it from the exhibition season to the regular season. Had four early points in this one, has not been able to get there since. Seibert, the walking violation, a couple of fouls, walking violation. He has knocked down a jumper, but uh, Dad Mata's saying, that's all right, just settle down. Terry, if this game gets close, these last two possessions 
have really will have really hurt Ohio State. They had opportunity to get this to 15 and 17. And now if it gets close now those two possessions you can look back at and say Ohio State missed a terrific opportunity to take this out before the half. The possessions that players tend to forget about but it is uh, a cumulative game. No is it Couple Bianco back on the floor now for the Hoosiers. Will Sheehy looking for somewhere to go. And they're going to whistle against Indiana. The offensive foul called inside. Another moving screen. And again, Tommy, well, Bobby Capobianco has, uh, has really struggled with that all year long. Just not getting set. It's a fundamental, like any other fundamental in basketball, it's fundamental that you have to work at and get good at. Campo Bianco's second foul. Cyber, nice entry pass. Sullinger with the finish. Going accustomed to that already. Well, Bobby Campo Bianco went through the passing lane, but Will Sheehy was not over and helped, made a freshman mistake. You have to be over there on the pass, and no way, no way can Jared Sullinger get that pass. Three for three so far from the floor. Doesn't seem like he's been a bigger part of the offense. Seems like he's been a huge part of the right? offense. Jones. Rivers, side to side. Hull's penetration, good pull up, and gets the roll, Jordan Hull. And shoot the three, you gotta respect that. Diebler around the screen. You got Diebler the shooter, Sullinger inside, a huge factor. How do you defend against that? You have to run a second guy at him. You, you, you just have to. You have to make uh, Seibert beat you. you. His man has to run and double and make him give up the basketball. I, I know he hit one already, Seibert did, but he, he's going to have to hit more. About a 12-second difference. Shot clock, game clock. Sheehy. Offensive foul called, and Diebler celebrates. It's the second time that he's drawn a foul like that. Well, you see here, Jared Sullinger is going to set two screens and set up in the post. There is no help on the backside. You see number 10. He should have been there early. Now, you just can't play him one-on-one. -on -one. You just can't play Jared Sullinger one-on-one. -on -one. He, Somebody has to come over and double, get the ball out of his hands, and live with whatever result comes out of it. Ohio State, how do you like this for shooting in the first half? 79% from the floor. Thomas called for the walking violation. The Hoosiers will get a chance for 5.9. Oh, the depot comes back in. Watford comes back in as they try to get a shot off here and a good one. Well, ideally here, you would like to take the ball straight at Jordan Halls' side as fast as you can. Put him in the, in the corner in front of Ohio State's bench. Halls around Kraft. Bounce pass to the corner. Oh, the depot is going to get it before the horn. Halls set him up. Victor Oladipo gives the Hoosiers a little bit of life as they head to the locker room. Well, they just got Jordan Halls the ball. The heck with driving it at him. And he made a terrific pass. Sullinger, a freshman mistake. He had to put his right foot on the baseline and take a charge. He let Oladipo go right past him and lay it in. But Ohio State shoots almost 80% in the first half. Sullinger and Buford combined 25 points, 9 of 10. It's 46 to 33. Buckeyes on top. Let's go back to the studio and join Ryan Burr and Miles Simon. All right, Terry, so a 13-point game at Assembly Hall. Ohio State all over Indiana in this one, 46-33. And Miles Simon, this is your kind of game. Both teams not playing a whole lot of D. Ohio State <laughs> shooting 71%. Indiana shooting 50%. You're an offensive guy. You must love this first half. You're saying that Arizona, I didn't guard anybody. <laughs> I'm saying you like to shoot it. Me? Did you see me? I'm saying you like to shoot it. No, a I do bit. like to shoot it, but both teams are shooting lights out. Ohio State was killing that zone. Seven three pointers in the first half. Now maybe I'm speaking for myself, <laughs> Miles. But uh, when you look at Ohio State, number two in America, and, and the debate is starting to happen: Is Ohio State in the same class at Duke? Should we start to look at Ohio State with Kyrie Irving out as the number one team in the polls? Your thoughts? 
I don't think they're better than Duke right now. Uh, now, they are an excellent team. Jared Solinger is now the best freshman in the country now that Irving is out. But Duke is the top dog. Singler, Nolan Smith, the Plumlee brothers, until you knock them off, they're the defending champions. They've won over 30 games in a row. Uh, you can't take them off that number one perch. Get that arm loosen up, Miles. Get it loose. Get it ready to go. <laughs> I was speaking of freshmen, uh, Selinger has been great tonight, but Kentucky, they've got some freshmen as well. Coach Cal Perry taking on Rick Pitino in Louisville, and one of those freshmen, Brandon Knight, would have a career game. Yeah, the maturity of Brandon Knight at the point guard position is what's going to bode well for Kentucky down the line. He's really handling the ball well, not, not turning it over too much. The big question with Kentucky, who will replace DeMarcus Cousins well, Josh Harrelson did a pretty good impersonation today. Oh, well, he did a good job today. Now, he's not going to replace DeMarcus Cousins on a consistent basis like that. But if you can shoot dunk shot after dunk shot and then layups, of course, you're going to look like an all-star. 23 points, 14 rebounds for Harrelson inside. You combine that with Knight with 25 points and four assists. And you can see why Kentucky rolls Louisville 78 to 63. Kansas State taking on North Florida in this one second half. K-State already up by 18. And you talk about the dunk shot, Jamar Samuels, a high percentage, especially when he gets in the purple. Yeah, today was really easy. Kansas State, a team that's been struggling for offense, played without their two best players, Curtis Kelly and Jacob Pullen. Samuels again on the alley-oop. Second half, uh, it's already a route, 84-61. Showing some range here, the big fella. Yeah, it gave a chance for some other guys to get some touches today, and Jamar Samuels took advantage of that. 26 points for him, the judge. Puts the final verdict on this one. Wally Judge, 22 points, 9 rebounds, 176 Kansas State rolls. What is wrong with Tennessee? Beat Villanova, beat Pitt, and since then, it has been uh, not good to say the least. Losers are 3 out of 5 coming into this one. Could have lost all 5, and here they are down big to College of Charleston. Yeah, Andrew Goudlock had a big-time game, one of the best scorers in the country, 31 points against the Vols. Tennessee loses four out of six, 91-78. And, Miles, I'll, I'll ask you point blank, in your estimation, what's wrong with Tennessee? I think a lot of selfish play. They seem to play a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. Defensively, they don't help each other. Giving up 91 to Carls of Charleston is uh, a case in point there. They have to just get better as a team as they go into SEC play. Speaking of getting better as a team, Michigan State, a tough non-conference. How would they respond at home against Minnesota? Find out next. Guaranteed at 10 times more locations than any other battery. Interstate batteries, outrageously dependable. This weekend, get two free at Joseph A. Bank. Buy any suit, sport coat, or outerwear and get two free. That's buy one, get any two free. Mix and match all suits, sport coats, top coats, even leather jackets. Buy one, get any two absolutely free at Joseph A. Bank. Now through Sunday. This January, big things are happening on the Big Ten Network. The nation's premier college basketball league tips off conference play. Ha <laughs> ha! Whoa! With behind-the-scenes access on the award-winning series, The Journey Big Ten Basketball 2011. And we reveal the top 10 greatest icons in Big Ten history. It's all this January, only on the Big Ten Network. The Barclays Premier League is on ESPN2. Well, that's an explosive hit from Nani. Every win is crucial as Man U looks to fend off West Brom. Saturday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com. New Year's Day at 1 on ABC. Florida faces Penn State in the Outback Bowl. At 1 on ESPN, Alabama and Michigan State battle in the Capital One Bowl. And at 1.30 on ESPN2, Mississippi State, Michigan in the Progressive Gator Bowl. Unbeaten Ohio State, very impressive in the first half against Indiana, 46-33. Jared Sullinger, the freshman, a perfect four for four from the field. He's got 11 points. 
Ohio State in control. Big story from pro and college football. Chris Mortensen reporting Chiefs offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss being targeted by the University of Florida to become the offensive coordinator under new coach Will Muschamp. Weiss is expected to take the job, but no firm agreement is yet in place. Over on ESPNU, it's College Baskets. South Florida taking on UConn. Both teams 0-1 in Big East play. First half, Hugh Robertson inside and taking it to the rim on the Huskies. Yeah, South Florida playing well on the road so far. Shabazz Napier, though, a big shot. Somebody besides Kemba Walker is going to have to step up. And they're tied at 28 at the half. Kemba, eight points, four rebounds for the Huskies. We'll keep you updated. Earlier today, Big Ten play, Northwestern on the road at Purdue. And this became the Etwan Moore show starring... Etwan Moore. Nice, with nicely <laughs> done, Miles. Nicely done. He would have a game... Seven three-pointers, scored 15 to the first 19 points for Purdue. And oh, you get a guy this hot, forget about it. Yeah, he was just in a zone all day against the Northwestern zone. He was just killing them. Corners, wing threes, just putting on showing an all-star performance. And Purdue is 13-1. and one. They're only lost to Richmond. They're 2-0 and oh in the Big Ten. Michigan State, bit of a turbulent non-conference for the Spartans. Taking on Minnesota at the Breslin Center. And uh, good start for the Golden Gophers. Al Nolan, the steal and deal. Minnesota up by eight. Early second half, Kalen Lucas settles everything down. Yeah, Lucas got hot. He's still recovering from that Achilles injury. It takes time. But as he goes, so go the Spartans. Knocking down the two here with the foot on the line. And then Darrell Summers gets into the act. Michigan State, a big second half, going to win at 71-62. Yeah, I think playing that tough, non-conference schedule will bode well in the pig in the Big Ten. Of course yesterday Stanford snapped UConn's 90 game win streak which was the longest win streak in men's and women's Division One history. Huskies also saw their 80 game regular season and 30 game road win streak comes to an end. Every streak has to come to an end for UConn. It happened last night on the road in Stanford which has now won 52 straight games at home. For UConn, it's time to look back at what was a great 90 games. I think you get a better appreciation for it today or tomorrow, the next day and the day after that, that you saw how easily it happened tonight, that it's, it's, it's un, unimaginable that you could go that long without it happening more than once. And the fact that it happened the way it happened, it's just... It's even more remarkable than, than, than why we were doing it, to, to have that happen. Because um, you saw what could happen tonight. And this from uh, UConn player Tiffany Hayes, tweeting on her Twitter. You live, you learn, thanks for staying with us. If you are, a little <laughs> shot there, Miles, huh? A little shot at the faithful? Yeah, I don't think they're going to leave him. UConn is the elite program in America right now. I don't yeah. think she has anything to worry about. One loss should not uh, cost them a trip to the NCAA tournament, you wouldn't think. Just kidding. Uh, when we return, the Sun Bowl. Back to the 80s. It's Miami and Notre Dame. Stay with us. I'm going to take a quick dip. Okay. Keep your head in the game with NFL Mobile and never miss a touchdown with NFL Red Zone every Sunday afternoon. You're picturing me as Adrian Peterson again, aren't you? <laughs> Don't be silly, Adrian Peterson. Stay focused. Get NFL Mobile only on Verizon. I can't believe I used to swing over those rocks. Took some foolish risks as a teenager. But I was still taking a foolish risk with my cholesterol. Anyone with high cholesterol may be at increased risk of heart attack. Diet and exercise weren't enough for me. I stopped kidding myself. I've been eating healthier, exercising more, and now I'm also taking Lipitor. If you've been kidding yourself about high cholesterol, stop. 
Along with diet, Lipitor has been shown to lower bad cholesterol 39 to 60%. Lipitor is FDA approved to reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke in patients who have heart disease or risk factors for heart disease. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. You need simple blood tests to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor if you are taking other medications or if you have any muscle pain or weakness. This may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. Let's go, wake up! If you have high cholesterol, you may be at increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Don't kid yourself. Talk to your doctor about your risk and about Lipitor. Guys, great job designing RepairView. Insurance customers love this app. Yeah, daily photo updates sent to your phone so you can follow your car repair while it's in the shop. That's what the insurance tech team does. We innovate. What else is on here? Well, that's the, um, uh... Oh, Frank. Daddy gets his dance on. Nice kneecaps, bro. Repair View at no extra cost. See for yourself at eSurance. Technology when you want it, people when you don't. Brian Burr, Miles Simon, the NHL's Winter Classic has been moved from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow in Pittsburgh. Rain during the day should be nice and cold, though, in the evening for the Capitals and the Penguins. That means Sidney Crosby, 8 p.m. Winter Classic under the lights at Heinz Field. The Sun Bowl, Notre Dame and Miami. It's like back to the old Orange Bowl in the 80s. And Notre Dame looked like the 80s again. They're getting it done. Tommy Reese from Michael Floyd. Notre Dame up 14 zip and the Irish Miles putting it on the Canes. Yeah, I just want to know what happened to Ja'Cory Harris. High expectations coming in this year. Kind of folded up towards the end. Folded that 10 indeed 7 and 6 for the Canes. Just a reminder, 730, the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Good one brewing here, 20th ranked South Carolina in the old ball coach. Taking on Florida State 23 in America at 730 over on ESPN. And you take a look at uh, what is in store, an absolute tradition in this country. You pretty much uh, camp in front of the television miles and just watch football all day long, including the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Fifth ranked Wisconsin taking on third ranked TCU. Game we're watching. Ohio State from the Big Ten. All over Indiana, 46-33. Back to Bloomington for the second half next. begun for the Capital One Cup. At the end of the school year, one men's and one women's Division I athletics program will win this coveted award given to the school with the best on-field performance in NCAA Division I championships. Each winning school will receive $200,000 to fund student-athlete graduate level scholarships. Follow your school and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com. your money in your pocket for the holidays upstate because at the all new best Chevrolet you can sign and drive brand new Chevrolet Silverado extended cabs zero down $299 a month sign and drive not 72 months just 39 month term exclusive of that buy any new Chevrolet before months end and you don't make a payment for the next four months the biggest and the best inventory will be any other dealers offer come by call or click the all new best Chevrolet highway 153 and easily always your best choice
got downtown Bloomington all lit up for the holiday season on this New Year's Eve. Ohio State celebrating so far here at the break. 46-33, the Buckeyes with a 13-point lead. Terry Gannon back with Dan Dockage. How good have the Buckeyes been offensively? They shot 79% from the floor. Felt like 90% and 70% from beyond the arc, Dan. Well, they've only missed four shots. They started outside with William Buford, just knocking in shots. 13 points in the first seven minutes. Indiana starting in the zone, and Buford shot them out of it. You can see not much pressure out of that zone from Indiana. And then late in the half, Jared Sullinger went to work. Indiana in the second half is going to have to double team. You cannot allow any post guy on Indiana's team one on one with Sullinger on the block. Indiana's going to have to double. Jared Sullinger, four of four from the floor for 11 points. William Buford, five of six for 14 points. He was also three of four beyond the arc. Indiana in the first half shot 52%, but they turned it over 10 times. Waterdale commits the foul here at the top of the key. And the numbers on the first half, Buford with the 14 points, set the tone early on. He did. Indiana came out in kind of their hybrid zone. Christian Wofford on top. The weakness was the baseline. Give Thad Mott and his staff credit. They exploited that weakness mostly with Buford. And then late in the half, when you're struggling man to man, Indiana playing pretty good, pretty well defensively. They just went to Jared Sullinger. They're going to have to do it in the second half. Indiana is going to have to get more from this man, Christian Watford, who's called for the walking violation. So it'll be Ohio State basketball. But he struggled in the Big Ten opener against Penn State, and he struggled here offensively. Now he's one for four. When he's gone on the block, and they've isolated him down there, he's gotten good shots. He missed two really nice shots. That is a place Indiana can feel comfortable going as we move through the half. He's also turned it over three times so far in the game. Ball hits Jones right in the backside. Verdell in the lane for the pull-up. Nice little 15-footer. That was a bad play on both ends by Diebler. He threw the ball away, and then he left the ball. Verdell Jones, as good a mid-range shooter as the Big Ten has, you just can't ever leave the basketball. Bit of a lost start, too, that mid-range shot from a guard especially. Yeah, Indiana people will tell you, Verdell Jones is in the gym either here or Cook Hall constantly working on that. Cook Hall, brand new practice facility and more that was just finished in the spring here on the campus in Bloomington. Sullinger to the left hand this time. Tough shot. Hoosiers looking to run. And Jones will pull it back up and set it up. Foul trouble post player wise in the first half. Elston with three, Pritchard with three for Tom Crean's club. Well, Watford fighting to get it back and it sticks up on the rim. Possession arrow gives it back to the Buckeyes. People always talk about halftime adjustments. And as a coach, most of your halftime adjustments are how are you going to score? Indiana can shoot the ball inside out, meaning throw it inside, kick it out, step into your shot. Pretty good with that, Verdell Jones. But their comfort in the second half is going to be what you just saw, which is Christian Wofford. Now, he missed that shot, but he got a terrific shot. That is. If I'm Tom Crane, that's a, you're going to see a steady diet of that in the second half. A whistle away from the ball. And they're going to call the foul on Pritchard. And that is four on Tom Pritchard. So Crane having to get Derek Elston back up quickly. Well, Tom Pritchard's going to be called for a foul. But you know what? What the heck? Don't let Jared Sullinger get the ball. And if you foul, you foul. Even that far from the basket. Don't let him get it. Harry, I just don't just and here's why he, he took off on a drive and missed it um, but if you let him get the ball he gets comfortable just never allow him to be comfortable lighty operating inside the whistle and the foul on Verdell Jones that's his first so David to the free throw line in the act just a 63 percent free throw shooter though David Lighty came here as a defensive guy and has really worked on his game. And that was a very unconfident stroke right there by David Lighty. He got he got that ball up and out of his hands far too quickly. Missed an entire season. Well, only played seven games a couple of years ago because of a broken foot, medical redshirt year, and then broke it again back in a workout in May. 
physically is fine now, though. You know, he was he was really good today in their shoot around. He. Well, the depot had it taken right off the backboard by Sullinger. Lighty was the first guy in the gym, the first guy up shooting. Shooting again, forcing the issue at this end. Going to draw the foul again on Indiana. And that's on Derek Elston. And that's four on him. So he's got four. And Pritchard just a moment ago picked up his fourth. In a war of attrition at some point. Well, now Capo Bianco. He takes a swing next, I would guess. Well, maybe Tom Crean may think about going small here. And he's got Rivers up, set to check in. Elston, though, trying to guard Sullinger right now. He's got four fouls on him. Do you body him or not? And the foul, that's it. Sullinger will go to the free throw line. So before Rivers can get in, Elston picks up the foul. You, you just have to double. You, you, you have to pick your poison in this game. He is going to foul out three guys in this game. I know game he is. He's Elston just fouled out at the 17-17 mark of the second half. Played nine minutes and picked up five fouls. Problem you have when you double with this particular lineup. Diebler, everybody that watches college basketball knows the kind of shooter he is. Buford, terrific start to the season shooting the ball. If you double off Lighty, here's your problem. You have to recover back to him. And he is as good a driver mm -hmm. against a straight-up defense as there is in the Big Ten. He's even better against a recovering defense, and that puts the rest of your defense in a bad situation. You're, you're not leaving many options defensively they're, right they're, now, Coach. The, and that's why they're so good. You know, th That's why they are... I don't know if they're better yet than they were last year, but they're certainly on par with last year. Sullinger the miss. Now, do you agree with those who think that they are a better team overall right now after losing the number two pick overall in the draft, Evan Turner? I'm not 100% convinced, but I will say this. In the games where they have been challenged, or you thought they were going to be challenged, they ended up not being challenged. Buford, the spin, pretty move, and then he blew the layup. Rivers challenging Lauderdale. Not a good idea, perhaps. Starts the Ohio State break. Whitey inside out to Buford. Nails the three, and there comes the Ohio State run now. The lead back to 15. Now you get the sense, Indiana, even with the foul trouble, picking up a little intensity defensively, got it down to 12. Just like that, it's a 15-point game. Yeah, and it's because of maturity, Terry. Watch the maturity of Dallas Lauderdale here. He's going to run back to the basket. He knows who he is. He's going to run back to the basket, square his shoulders, and jump straight up. That's a mature play by a senior. The Tostitos BCS National Championship game, January 10th on ESPN. At Cheez-It, we expect a lot from our cheese. What do you call a cheese that isn't yours? I don't know. Nacho cheese. <laughs> See, because it's not your cheese, but I said nacho. <coughs> la, 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 can't hear you. La, 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 can't hear you. La, 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 can't hear you. That's when I decided to fully invest in my 401k. We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake it into every delicious cracker. Because at Cheez-It, real cheese matters. Are nasty drafts forcing you to crank up the heat? Heating bills are reported to increase dramatically, causing your money to literally fly out the door. With Twin Draft Guard's double-sided insulated design, your utility bills can be reduced by up to 30%. Watch, air seeps under the door, but Twin Draft Guard creates an airtight seal. It's adjustable, slides under any door or window, cut the length you need, cover and slide onto the door for a draft-proof seal. Twin Draft Guard seals any gap on any floor, even carpet. Use on windows for an airtight seal block wind and snow insulate garages and basements seal in air conditioning twin draft guard is only $19.99 call now and we'll double the offer if it doesn't pay for itself the very first month send it back for a refund as a free gift get the over the door ceramic hook absolutely free you get it all just $19.99 
Call 1-800-709-2502. Order now and you'll get two double-sided twin draft cards and the free bonus over-the-door hanger for $19.99. Call 1-800-709-2502 or go to twindraftcard.com. Good way to kick off your New Year's Eve festivities. If you're here in Bloomington, check out Ohio State and Indiana. The Buckeyes with the lead back up to 15. Jared Sullinger, a big reason why. If you're doing a scouting report on him, what are you saying here, Coach? Well, double him, triple him. <laughs> well, he's so good because he leads with his lower body. He's always putting a hip in, and it's a big old hip. He is terrific at moving to the right spot. Ohio State will spread you, penetrate. He, because he's been coached by his father and by Ohio State staff, understands finding the right position and then understands post position. Terry, if you play him on the high side, he moves you up to create room. If you play behind, he backs you down. He is just so well schooled on playing as a big man. And there are no good options once again as we get another quick whistle in the foul on Indiana, the depot picking up the foul. Buckeyes, 8 of 12 inside the arc, 8 of 12 outside the arc. Pick your poison. So, again, I go to the point. Just figured out, double Sullinger, they're making threes anyway. Tipped out, IU ball. You know, Indiana, when they have really become aggressive in their man-to-man -man, has done a nice job their zone not so much but man for man guarding with active hands causing chaos on the ball has been pretty good indiana with losses to boston college kentucky northern iowa the one that uh, you know, i think fans were disappointed with the northern iowa always competitive colorado and penn state although well, depot rattles one home and it's a 12-point game you know, Indiana's hanging around. We've been talking about Sullinger. We've been talking about the shooting, but Indiana only down 12 here. Rivers caught on Sullinger. Good luck. Little help from Watford cross court. Lighty, he'll let it fly. Set up by the double down low on the block on Sullinger. <laughs> There's your example right there. I'd go back to it. I, 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 I would double off line and make him hit, hit a steady die to those. Watford trying to get on track, buries a three. And it's a 12-point game again. You know, we're laughing because you're, that is the approach that you have to take at some point. But they're so good all around the front at all five spots. So many threats. And Rivers again caught low. This time, Sullinger makes it look easy. Timeout taken as Kraft is set to check into the game. Well, we talked about Jared Sullinger being well schooled in the, schooled in the post. Here comes the double, but it wasn't a very good double. When you go to double the ball, as Christian Watford kind of did there, you have to put pressure on the ball handler. Here, Jeremiah Rivers just not big enough, but Jordan Hall's on the weak side. He has to be there, and, and literally, Terry, just jump up on top of Sullinger and knock the ball, get it out of there. If you foul, you foul. But Jordan Hall is just not there. You have to be proactive in help defense. Be there early, not late. Efficient numbers for Sullinger so far as we keep it rolling here on New Year's Eve on ESPN 2, 10 o'clock Eastern. This matchup coming your way, Oklahoma State on the road. They're up in Spokane to take on at Gonzaga Stephen Gray. Mark Few hopes he's healthy. He's been dealing with some back spasms as of late. Although, Gonzaga's turned it around after some early losses. Oh, they have. They beat Baylor. They beat Xavier. Marshall Moses, Oklahoma State, pretty good. 18, 17 and a half, eight and a half rebounds. Buckeyes back to a zone. Watson lost it. Over Depot recovers, operates inside. Victor Over Depot with the deuce. Well, if you're Tom Green, you're looking for a stop any way you can get it. And the Hoosiers go back to his zone. Again, somebody in the middle, then work the baseline. Maurice Creek also now on the floor for Indiana. Craft out top, they swing it. Diebler knocks down another three. How do you defend against this <laughs> offense? Even he's smiling about it. 
I, I said it before, and I'll, I'll say it again. When you are in a zone, it does not matter the zone, but you have to be fast. The last offensive possession for Indiana, they were really fast. The defensive possession, they were not. It doesn't matter what zone if the other team is in a zone shooting the ball, too. Not for turn around in the lane. Smooth move. Indiana looking far more fluid offensively because everything they do, they are doing much harder and much faster. This is Watford in double figures with 10 now. Lighty creates off the move and a foul inside of the depot. Picked up his second. Ball movement, man movement. Buckeyes had a little bit of everything. And at the end product, if it's Diebler, you can ring it up. 13-point lead for Ohio State. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, y'all. Roll Tide, Mother Greg. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Get sauce. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. It's such an honor. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Yep. Y'all don't even know he was a virgin until he's 28, and now, Roll Tide. <laughs> Woo! Hi, Mary and Daisy. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. You will always be remembered. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. I told you you were too close, but nobody ever listens to me. No, 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 no. I mean, who does that? Backs a car into another car? You know what? You make my head numb. I can't even. Ugh. Like a good my neighbor, State numb. Farm is there. I'll take care of this. With a new boyfriend. Hot. With digging. a new girlfriend. Oh, this is what you like. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was perfect the way I was. OK. State Farm agents are there when you need them. The revolutionary new Philips Norelco Senso Touch 3D. Our most advanced shaver ever invites you to experience a revolutionary 3D movie event. Disney's Tron Legacy. For a special ticket offer, visit 3dshave.com slash Tron today. Buckeyes on the road, 58-45. Got to give Indiana credit. They're hanging in there, even though Ohio State has been making everything, including 4-4 four four beyond the arc for Diebler. Well, let's watch John Diebler, who's going to move out into here, and the guy guarding him, which is going to be Maurice Creek right here. Watch the sequence between these two. Creek is going to go double the post and then doesn't get out to John Diebler. What you have to do when you get out, even if you run past Diebler, he has to be made to put the ball on the floor. Wait a minute. You just told me the number one key was to double Sullinger. Right. You did that. <laughs> now you've got to move to the next thing, and you just get in a dead sprint. And even if you run past him, normally you say recover, short, high hands, all that stuff. No. In this game where they're making everything, you have to make them put it on the floor. But that's that's the dilemma. That's, that's, the, that's dilemma. the hard part. Right. 10 threes. It is already so in the easy game. sitting here, you and me, yeah. talking about this. So difficult to do. Ohio State had 13 threes in a game against Florida Gulf Coast. They've got 10, or 10 of 14 right now from beyond the arc. The lead back up to 15. Halls. Ola Depot. Sheehy back on the floor now for Tom Cream. Rivers going to set it up. Seven on the shot clock. Jeremiah looking for some place to go. No space at all. Watford's going to let it fly and buys the three pointer over Sullinger. 13 in the game now for Christian Watford. You know, Indiana's shooting almost 59%. Indiana is playing very well offensively. And Tom Crane much happier with this effort, certainly, than the one against Penn State. Yeah, that's another three. Getting used to that. David Lighty buries another one. 11 of 15 now for the Buckeyes. 
I know Tom Crean's not enjoying it. Not enjoying it. it this has been pretty fun to watch. This has been amazing to watch because these aren't in transition where guys are wide open. I mean, this is this is a variety of ways that Ohio State has come in on the road in their first Big Ten game and just just shot lights out. Ebler just picked up his first second team foul on Ohio State. Indiana's got six team fouls. The Buckeyes shooting the rest of the way. And a whistle, a foul on David Lighty away from the ball, his third. Good move by Indiana. They kept Watford opposite the ball, brought the ball towards him against a much smaller Lighty. Sheehy, Buford got a piece. Knocked out of bounds, Buckeye basketball. There are times, there have been times. I asked Thad Mata today, what's the one thing that, that maybe has been lacking? And collectively as a staff, they said, well, maybe that knockout punch when we get up in games, heading to the second half. It's a nice problem to have. It means you're up all the time. It's a great problem to have, but they did it here, the two possessions in the first half. Whistling a jump ball call is going to be Indiana basketball on the possession arrow. So the Hoosiers with a stop down by 15, 11.49 left. Roll into Sonic and get ready for something different. Like richer, creamier real ice cream. Plumper, juicier footlong conies. And a new bigger, thicker burger patty. All better tasting than ever. And delivered with style by a friendly, smiling car hop. It's new. It's better. It's the new Sonic Good. Capital One Bowl Week culminates New Year's Day on ESPN with a highly anticipated showdown between SEC and Big Ten powers in the Capital One Bowl. The Spartans look to cap off their remarkable season with a win over former coach Nick Saban and the talented veteran offense of the Crimson Tide. The Capital One Bowl, Alabama versus Michigan State, New Year's Day at 1 Eastern on ESPN. College football lives here. Used car elimination. Used cars as low as 4000 3000 even 1995 Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of demo cars, dealer cars, acquisition, rental cars, lease cars, pre-owned and used cars of every imaginable shape and size. One solid week. Everything is priced at $77 down. $77 delivers. You may never see prices this low again. It's right now in Greer at Hyundai of Greer. Benson Nissan in Easley says year-end clearance. It's a real year-end clearance. Look at these deals. 2011 Versa 1.8S hatchback. MSRP 15425 Now clearance price just 11588 Or the all-new 2011 Jew was $20,000. Now clearance price to just 19788 And we can offer just 2.9% financing for 60 months. At Benson Nissan Easley, everything we have is clearance price. I'm Chris Crosby. I not only guarantee it, I stand behind every great deal. Ryan Burr in studio Sports Center in game. Check out what is happening UConn and USF. Kemba Walker in transition. Alex Oriaki there for the tip. It's a three point game. The Bulls up on the Huskies with eight minutes to go. Terry and Coach Dockage. Tough couple of days, perhaps, for UConn, the men and the women. Back here in Bloomington, Ohio State, the number two team in the nation getting a good look at why they are so highly ranked and undefeated at 13 and 0. They've rarely missed tonight, Dan. Well, they're 11 for 15 from the three point line. 20 of 28 overall. <laughs> yeah, those numbers are right. We haven't made them up. You, know, you have Diebler four for four, Buford four for five. These are from the three point line. On a night when Indiana is shooting almost 60%. Yeah, Indiana the second half has beaten Ohio State to a lot of 50-50 balls, playing with a much better energy and a much better confidence in themselves. Hoosiers going deep into the shot clock on almost every possession now here in the second half. Down to five for Holmes. Sheehy over Lighty who changed that shot. Never hit the rim. 
Good challenge defensively from Lighty. Here comes Buford. Around the screen, just a little bit of daylight, and he knocks it down. Now, that one the coach will be mad about because William Buford was never challenged. He came across the court. Nobody got a hand in his face. Nobody showed at the ball. That one will get that one will get Tom Crane in a film session. Pritchard with the four fouls back on the floor for Crane. We approach the ten and a half minute mark. Again, the Hoosiers taking it to single digits on the shot clock. Rivers lets it fly. Pritchard called for the foul, and that'll be it for him. The fifth foul on Tom Pritchard. So Pritchard's out. Nelson fouled out at the 17 minute mark. Ohio State, how impressive they've been so far. They win games by almost 29 points per game. That's good enough for only fourth. How is that possible? I don't know, but I do know this. Thad Martin talking today, they asked him about not being challenged, and he had a great response. He said, I'm just so proud of our guys for putting ourselves in that position yeah. to where nobody has challenged us. You know, in, in the Big Ten, you look at the teams that are really good. They just don't turn the ball over, and I know that seems obvious, but Wisconsin is first in the NCAA in assist to turnover margin. You're looking here at Ohio State, fourth in the NCAA in assist to turnover margin. It is such, it has become such an important statistic because teams are so fast getting the ball down the floor now. Sullinger misses the first of a one and one. Uh, Big Ten now as we start play, it's underway in full swing. Based on what you expected to see and what we now know, what are the surprises for you? I don't think it's any surprise that Purdue is as good as they are, but how they've played through two Big Ten games, Terry, they went to Michigan, and Michigan was feeling pretty good about themselves, and they just blew them out by 23 in Michigan, and then today they beat Northwestern. They beat him handily. They stopped John Stern at 23 a night. He gets 11. I think it's a surprise, but it's something that has has played itself out here early. Northwestern, what you expected or better than expected? I think Northwestern is a team that has to find an inside presence or else they're going to lose to good Big Ten teams. Sullinger high into the air for the rebound, but a whistle as he does so. And a foul on the Hoosiers once again. So Purdue... As expected, 13 and 1. Wisconsin at 11 and 2 will always be tough to play no matter what. Illinois searching for that presence inside. On one night, they can be great if they're knocking down shots, and another night, a lot of teams can beat them. There's no question, really talented team. You know, DJ Richardson, everybody knows about McKamey and Mike Tisdale and Mike Davis, the seniors, but DJ Richardson, and they also have a terrific freshman. Jeremy Richmond is a kid that can play five spots. He's a freshman out of Chicago, ultra, ultra talented and tough. But leadership has always been the issue, at least in the last couple years with Illinois. If you go on the road, you play in Bloomington, that's what you look at if you're shooting free throws. And everybody from Abe Lincoln to Danny DeVito to Arnold Schwarzenegger in the crowd. <laughs> Star-studded crowd here in Bloomington. <laughs> Jones, Sullinger. Yeah, Green. Helping make that call on the sideline and, and walking quickly away as Thad Mata has the right smile. Well, Mike Sanzier gave a quick look to Tom. <laughs> but Jared Sullinger commits a foul right there, but he has been terrific playing center field in their defense, taking away any drives in the lane. Watford trying to get position inside. Hall is going to pull up, though. Oh, Sullinger, a man's rebound. Just shoved Watford out of the way and went and got it. Inside at the other end is Sean Thomas. Fouled in the act. He goes to the line for two. Television will not do this rebound justice. As it hasn't basically all day. But he gives a little bit of a nudge sullinger does to watford and watford went flying off of his body again he nudged him with his hip he doesn't use his arms he doesn't extend he throws a hip or a shoulder into you and just moves you and not to overstate this but that's that's more than just being physical that's knowing how to use yourself that's knowing how to play you're right. exactly right seven rebounds 
in the game so far for Jared Sullinger to go along with 15 points. And this crowd is about as quiet as it will ever get inside Assembly Hall. Watford changes that for the moment. Much better offensively here in the second half. And it's big for Christian Watford coming off a three-point game, one basket against Penn State. Buford. Another one? Are you kidding me? Another one? That was set up by Aaron Kraft. Aaron Kraft made a no-look pass. The defense did not react until that ball was in William Buford's hands. Indiana's tried everything. They tried their hybrid defense. They've been in a 1-3-1. They played man-to-man. -man. They tried doubling. Jones, the pull-up. That mid-range game that he's become so effective at. At some point, Tom Crean and his staff feel like water's going to find its level. Eventually, the statistics say they're going to start missing. But when they do, they go inside. They've got 12, make it 13 threes on the night. Diebler from that same spot right in front of Thad Mata. Holy cow. This is an exhibition. Jones lost it. It's off of him. It'll be Buckeye basketball. Well, we've seen this out of Diebler. We've seen this out of Buford. We've seen this out of Lighty. We've seen this out of everybody. Three goes up, three goes in. <laughs> This weekend, get two free at Joseph A. Bank. Buy any suit, sport coat, or outerwear and get two free. That's buy one, get any two free. Mix and match all suits, sport coats, top coats, even leather jackets. Buy one, get any two absolutely free at Joseph A. Bank. Now through Sunday. Hops are the soul of Samuel Adams. Hops add a spicy citrus flavor to Sam Adams. The best hops have been grown on family farms like the Stengelmeyers for centuries. It has unique conditions of soil, moisture, and sunlight. Boston Lager, the proof is in the taste. I'm going to take a quick dip. Okay. Keep your head in the game with NFL Mobile and never miss a touchdown with NFL Red Zone every Sunday afternoon. Picturing me as Adrian Peterson again, aren't you? <laughs> Don't be silly, Adrian Peterson. Stay focused. Get NFL Mobile only on Verizon. Right now at H&R Block, you could get up to $9,999, and you could get it fast. Just bring in your tax information and get a refund anticipation check. You pay nothing out of pocket. H&R Block. Never settle for less. Ryan Burns Studio. Just a reminder, coming up next, Seton Hall, Cincinnati. The Bearcats still undefeated, not getting a whole lot of love in the polls. That's 21 minutes from now, the Hall and Cincinnati. Terry and Coach. Ryan, thanks. If you love college hoops, this is your day on New Year's Eve. Purdue earlier today beat Northwestern College in Charleston. How about that win against Tennessee? And Lenny Elmore, the hardest working man in sports television, did the Xavier game set to do the Seton Hall Cincinnati game. <laughs> Not bad Good for, an for him. Hey, Florida. Florida is a team that's kind of interesting. When Irving Walker and Kenny Boynton, when they get others involved, they can be pretty good. Their front line after that. And, it, you know, that, that was the same thing with Xavier when Mark Lyons and yeah. Two Holloway passed the ball. The nightcap Oklahoma teams. State uh, and Gonzaga, Dan. And by the way, a pleasure to spend New Year's Eve here with you in Bloomington. Former player, assistant coach, interim head coach. It's like being with the governor. People coming up, <laughs> shaking your hands, asking for autographs, asking to kiss babies, everything. It would be like you being back at North Carolina State. People forget Terry Gannon was a great player. They forget for good reason. Yeah, well, when you are on the court in the last seconds of a national championship game, you are a great player. I'm milking every second of that. Should. Selinger, inside out. Buford, they finally miss one. And the crowd cheers. Yeah, a bit of a Bronx cheer. Just shocked that the Buckeyes missed one. Oh, 
So Jones will set up the offense. They talked a lot about Ohio State for good reason tonight. Tom Crean trying to turn things around here in Bloomington. And the blocking foul set as Oladipo presses the issue. Sullinger picks up the foul. But Crean now in his third year already signed a couple of players for next year and has a number of other commitments for 2012, a class that he thinks could be one of the best, if not the best in the country. Yeah, and highlighted by Hannah Perea, who is a multi-dimensional crazy athlete. I mean, he is a guy that uh, when you watch play, uh, you notice because of, of just incredible athletic abilities. A Colombian kid playing up in the northern part of the state. Uh, but he has it all the way through the freshman class. James Blackman Jr. and Trey Lyles are two of the best freshmen in the country. They've committed to Indiana. In the sophomore class, Colin Hartman, a kid out of Indianapolis Cathedral, who's a top 20 player in the country, has committed to Indiana. And here you see 2011 and 2012, Yogi Ferrell uh, as good a point guard in the high school ranks. Ron Patterson, a kid who's here uh, from Broad Ripple, very athletic, very strong, and Perea's the kid. Ultra, ultra athletic talent. So those four for 2012 have committed. You can't sign yet, obviously. That could change. But those are commitments, verbal ones. And next year, uh, one of the two, Cody Zeller, brother played at Notre Dame, his other brother at North Carolina. And, and that was a big deal. People forget Indiana University basketball is on probation from the Samson era. Mm -hmm. So Tom Crane has done all this while dealing with that. So give Tom and his staff, uh, Tim Buckley, a lot of credit for going out, working hard, and selling kids on what is going to happen here in Bloomington. Yeah, Tim Buckley, big part of his staff, been with Tom Crean for a number of years. And Crean, of course, nine years at Marquette. Went to the Final Four back in 03. And he blow the whistle and call a foul on Watford. But you, I mean, it, it's got to wear on you if you're a post player trying to defend either Sullinger or Lauderdale in there with the size all night. And give Ohio State credit. They spread you out, and they isolate the post. It's almost, you know how in college football the spread offense has become the big thing? Well, the spread offense of Ohio State makes post guys better because it's hard to help them. Lauderdale... Not one of the best from the free throw line. Two shots here, so that's why they blow the whistle again. 44% from the line. But they, they do, and it's by design in part, their, that motto, but they've got the personnel, which is perfect for what they like to run. They do, and, and even going back when they went to the, the championship game, Ron Lewis was a kid that drove the basketball, kind of where you see Buford now. Mike Conley was a driving kid. They, they, they recruited kids to their system. Oladipo will bring him out of those seats here in Assembly Hall. Victor had a career high 20 against Colorado and then got the start, had a good effort against Penn State. Approaching the six minute mark, it's been all Ohio State since the start of the game. This man right here had the first eight points of the game for the Buckeyes. Buford misses this time now. On the depot, inside the last time, outside didn't work. Fresh 35. And the foul called on Deshaun Thomas, his second. Well, nobody should ever get to the rim against a good defensive team. But Victor Oladipo gets to the rim, and nobody is there. You see here, Deshaun Thomas comes over way too late. Against good defense, that should never happen. Oladipo to the bench. Matt Roth, a junior from Washington, Illinois, comes on. Roth, a couple of years ago, against Ohio State, had 29, a career high, nine three-pointers in that game for him. Last year, just two games on the season. He had a broken right foot. Hurt his knee, missed the first four games this year, hurt an exhibition game. You know, Ohio State, I think, over the last few minutes here has really let up and give Indiana great credit. They have not. Watford had five in the first half. That was it. He got 12 here in the second. You've been around this program a long time, been around the Big Ten your entire life. What's, what's the mood right now and the feeling in Bloomington? 
Well, I think the loss to Penn State was a really bad loss for the entire program. I mean, you know, when you look at the Big Ten, there are so many difficult games. And Penn State coming in here, as I said earlier, off a loss to Maine. I, 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 the fan base really upset by that. But I think people also have a tendency with this particular group to understand long term that the commitments, the kids coming in, make the future pretty bright. Buford called for the offensive foul. That's his third. So a bit of a drought last few minutes. I, I just think Ohio State has let up here. Ohio, you can't relax ever in college basketball, and I think Ohio State has. Indiana has not. Indiana has the same looks on their face this entire game. There's been no quit in them. There's been no head hanging. They just played here. Sheehy has Lighty. Good move. Will Sheehy, just a freshman. I think Thad Mata may need a timeout here and get all over his team for doing exactly what we just said. It's been a 7 0 run for the Hoosiers since Sullinger went to the bench, and the Buckeyes have gone over three minutes without any points on the board, and another turnover giving it back to IU. There's your timeout. Well, you have to. They, 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 they have a completely relaxed look about them. Four minutes and 36 seconds in a 14 point lead is in no way, shape, or form even close to being over. It is, it's difficult, Terry, to go from lax to playing hard. It'll be interesting to see how Ohio State plays these last four and a half minutes because there's no question they let up. To what that mod is saying in the huddle right now. 14 point late still, though. ESPN, the home court of College Hoops, Saturday morning. ESPN 2's got Big East action. You got West Virginia taking on Marquette. It kicks off at 11 a.m., also available on ESPN3.com. So 436 left here in Bloomington, and the Buckeyes with a 14 point lead, but hearing it from Thad Mata. They should. And, and good for Thad because you could not let this go any farther. Yes, they have a 14 point lead, but 14 points, four and a half minutes, 35 seconds shot clock, and a three point line. A lot of ball game left. Sullinger back on the floor, though. The run for the Hoosiers coming with him on the bench. I would look for Ohio State throw it right in at him. And I'd look for Indiana to make Sullinger come out onto the floor and guard somebody. He's guarding Sheehy right now. On the deep ball, a little too quick for that first step. And Kraft picks up the foul. So the Hoosiers to the line. And Kraft has yet to score tonight. The disappointing thing for Thad Mata is going to be this. You have David Lighty out there, who's a fifth-year senior. You have John Diebler out there, who's a, who's a senior. You have William Buford out there, who's played as much basketball as anybody in the country as a junior. And they allowed themselves to relax. That's the disappointment for Thad, that nobody grabbed this and said, listen, this is not going to happen. Ohio State has gone over three and a half minutes without any points. Sullinger trying to change that. Sheehy called for the reach. They had Watford in front of him. Sheehy behind him. And Will picks up the foul. Well, Sheehy was hanging on for dear life. He was getting, he was just hoping that he didn't get thrown down. It, well, you had at some feel, uh, point a feeling that Sullinger was going to take him right up to the hoop <laughs> with him. Did. Back in is Creek and Jordan Holes. Different type crowd here tonight at Assembly Hall because the students are away from school. What happens is a lot of people in Indianapolis that don't normally have tickets available to them can buy a package over the holidays, and they are very appreciative people. They get here early, they bring their cameras, they come down the rail for shoot around. It is a different crowd without students. Yeah, they were all over the downtown area earlier today, and then inside Cook Hall, getting a look at that new, beautiful building right next door to Assembly Hall. Whistle and the foul on Aaron Kraft. Step away with just under four minutes left.
better battery? Get the one preferred by Autotex 5 to 1 over any other. Interstate batteries. Outrageously dependable. Now you can own the very first $2 bills honoring America's national parks. Yellowstone, the world's first national park, is now available to the American public, featuring Old Faithful Geyser practically gushing off the note. Official Federal Reserve and U.S. Treasury seals attest to each bill's legal tender status. $2 bills are among the rarest U.S. currencies, and these crisp, uncirculated, privately enhanced bills are now being released exclusively from the New England Mint. Each genuine $2 bill comes with breathtaking photos and a certificate of authenticity. The issue price has been set at $30, but if you act now through this special offer, it can be yours for just $10, plus processing and handling. Plus, call right now and you'll also receive this Grand Canyon $2 bill as a free bonus. But these $2 bills are extremely limited. Don't miss out. Get both the Yellowstone and the Grand Canyon $2 bills now for just $10. Call today. To order your National Parks $2 bills, call 1-800-841-9671, 1-800-841-9671, or go to parkbills.com. Call now. Ryan Burr in studio. What a game we have brewing on the U. Back and forth we go. USF down three, but a three with four on the shot clock. Ties it at 58. Under 20 seconds to go. UConn looks like they'll hold for the last shot. We'll keep you updated. Just a reminder, Yancey Gates, an undefeated Cincinnati. Eight minutes from now, taking on Seton Hall. Eight minutes from now here on ESPN2. And I can tell you, USF and UConn, Terry, going to overtime tied at 58. Ryan, we can't get enough hoops on this New Year's Eve. Plenty of action still to come back here in Bloomington. 77-61, Ohio State, the number two team in the nation. Bit of a drop for them the last four minutes, but still handily in the lead over the Hoosiers. Well, they've shot the ball so well. 13 threes they've made out of 19 attempts the free throw line they've missed eight of those so you know not so much there but I like what Christian Watford's done I, I think for Indiana this is big he did not play well against Penn State one basket three points didn't play particularly well in the first half but he's come back in the second half and established himself against the number one excuse me number two team in the country and I think that's really important moving forward for Indiana Ohio State cooling off considerably. They're only shooting 64% right now yeah, from the floor. Water finds its level, right? I mean, <laughs> they were up around 80% for much of the game. Three-quarter court pressure now by the Hoosiers. Kraft, who right before the break, picked up his fourth foul. Has yet to get on the board for the Buckeyes. Sullinger inside, taken the hoop by Oladipo. You don't call that one on the playground, they call it here. By the reaction of Sullinger's face, I don't think he thought that was a foul. Obviously, Oladipo didn't think that was a foul, but I don't think Sullinger thought that was a foul. Man, quick hops, Victor Oladipo. Sullinger to the line. Rolls in the first. They came out of nowhere. Victor Oladipo, we, we talked about it early in the broadcast, just plays with terrific energy. I and mean, he makes himself effective by how hard he plays. 18 points, now 19 and 8 rebounds for Sullinger. The freshman takes his seat on the bench. And that's when IU's run came when Songer picked up his fourth foul and sat for about three minutes. Jones gives it off to Rivers, finger rolls it in. Green up and wanting some pressure up the court. Kraft, just a freshman, high school valedictorian, gives it off to Buford. The miss, and the Hoosiers believing right now. I know there's three minutes left, but a 15-point game. They're thinking if they can get a couple of quick threes from Halls. Well, the deep little tip. And the foul is going to be called on Lauderdale. It was exactly what you said. Indiana was believing right there. That would have been a, that would have been a big shot in this game for Indiana. And now they're going to reverse the call. 
And you can hear the reaction from the crowd. We're walking to the other end. As Crean is up directing traffic. I think Lauderdale had inside position here. And they call the foul on Victor Oladipo. And that, that was the call initially. That's a. Uh, to so me, that's just that's a fifth. play on in the Big Ten. Yeah. You know, the Big Ten is a league of, of tough guys. To me, you just play on and whatever happens, happens. Spoken you know, like a, a true old school Big Ten guy. Well, it, you know, there have been a lot of touch fouls in this game. And, you know, big guys are under the basket going after a ball. Sometimes they're going to they're going bang each other. You just, you just play and figure it out later. And you're looking for advantage gained at some point, too. Yeah, yeah if you come down and you hit a guy and grab the ball out of his, out of his arm by grabbing his wrist, then certainly. But, you know, these are big guys. They're going to they're gonna hit each other <laughs> once in a while. Lauderdale. I think I know shooting pretty well. I think I can teach it pretty well, but that's not it. I don't think so. No, I, okay. I don't think. All right, just check it. Under 50, well under 50 percent for the season. And under three minutes to go now. 16 point lead for the Buckeyes. Taken away. Great anticipation by Kraft. Takes it in and gets fouled in a dangerous one at that. Quickly back up though on his feet. This is really clever by Aaron Kraft. He saw this play before it ever happened. Jordy Halls was coming off a high staggered screen and Aaron Kraft read that before Jordan Halls ever made a move. He's a valedictorian in high school for a reason. 3.8 grade point average so far the first quarter and was very upset. He's had a little slippage at his, at his B plus. Yes. How did that happen? <laughs> what are you doing? Much like your uh, college career? <laughs> sure. So, so much you're back on the floor. And it's a 17 point lead. Now, the Buckeyes, you look at what they've got coming up. They're at Iowa, and then Minnesota at home, at Michigan, and Penn State, where Indiana's got to go on the road for four of the next five. Yeah, this is for uh, Ohio State. This is, um, this is the easy part of their schedule. And it will get obviously much tougher. But this is, you know, they have a real opportunity to get off to a terrific start. This is where Ohio State's really been good over the years. Just handling the basketball, using the dribble. Until Kraft nearly turned it over, knocked out of bounds by the Hoosiers. Kraft apparently didn't hear me. No, he did not. Speak louder next time, please. <laughs> We got 19 on the shot clock for the Buckeyes. Buford thought about it. Sollinger had it taken away. Corner jumper way off from Maurice Creek. And you can just tell. I mean, that's a young man right now, just a sophomore who's playing without any confidence. Well, his leg has not healed. It is, an, it is a year injury minimum. We are just over a year. But again, he's a kid that has really battled and has made no excuses and has wanted none from his teammates or his coaches. But you can see he's he's hurting right now. He's he had to sit for a stretch in this game and, and his leg is not right. He has not been able to get loose when he came back in. Fractured left kneecap, which takes a long time to come back from. Fallen Watford, Buford at the line. Uh, William Buford. To his standard, was not shooting the ball particularly well. Came in the gym, spent extra time, had a good effort in their last win, 23 points in the win over Tennessee Martin, and has backed it up tonight with another 23. Yeah, he came right out with 13 points in the first seven minutes, just destroyed Indiana's zone. And, and talking to Thad Mata about Buford, you know, he, he said what you just said. He really got in the gym, uh, understood that his jump shot. Yeah, is going to be the thing that carries him if he's going to have opportunity to play at the next level. So, you know, mature decision. Some guys, when they're not shooting well, yeah, we'll figure it out. Other guys get in the gym and work at it. 
Then there comes a point where all the work you put in, you, you want to get away from the gym and not think about it. because It becomes a mental part of the game as well. And as you know, having been a shooter, it only takes one or two makes, and then you're right back at it. Yep. And sometimes not jumpers. Any right. any feeling the ball go through the basket in any way can get you started. No question. Foul shots, anything. Layup on transition. Roth back in now for Indiana. Seibert back in for the Buckeyes. Sean Thomas trying to back in on Watford. And the whistle and a walking violation. In the last six and a half minutes, Thad Mata's club doing a lot of work at the free throw line, but not from the floor. Under a minute to go. Maurice Creek buries the three. And didn't hesitate this time. Thomas. Oops. There's the foul. Not going to take away the embarrassment, though, for Deshaun Thomas. When his, when his teammates watch the tape. Well, let's see if he gets fouled here. Deshaun Thomas. Got hit on the head. Hit in the back of the head. You know, Dan Mata was really upset with Deshaun Thomas. You mentioned Maurice Creek. Looked comfortable shooting the three. Thad Mata doesn't care if there's 50 seconds to go. Deshaun Thomas basically jogged back on defense. And what makes you even more upset as a coach, he jogged back on defense, gave up the three, but when it came time to go back on offense, he was an Olympic sprint champ getting down. Somehow it's, it's easier to get down the floor offensively it's than defensively. Downhill. Yeah. Uphill always. on defense, downhill on offense. And it switches at half. It's unbelievable. 84-67. <laughs> As Watford looks for more. Been an impressive showing. Holds the foul. Will walk to the other end. But uh, any any kind of preconceived notions you had about the Buckeyes coming in, they've been affirmed. And the other aspect of it, you never quite know until you get into the conference schedule and you start on the road how exactly the young guys are going to react. And uh, Thad mata has got to be pleased with that tonight. Well, I've had a number of college coaches tell me they feel the Big Ten is the best scouted conference in the country you know you look at these coaches you know Tom Crean was an assistant to Tom Izzo Bruce Weber was an assistant to Gene Cady Matt Painter assistant to Bruce Weber guys that worked for guys that were terrific fundamental basketball coaches so as you move through this your performance in Big Ten play uh, it, it's going to be made more difficult to be good because of terrific scouting. You think that adds to the style of play sometimes in the Big Ten? I think the Big Ten gets a bit of a bad rap. I mean, if Michigan State, you know, is being a slow league. Michigan State will get the ball down the floor. Ohio State will get the ball down the floor. Indiana's going to run. Uh, Minnesota will run. I, I think there's a bad perception out there that the Big Ten being a slow league. On their feet, applauding the effort, if not the outcome, here in Bloomington. Final seconds here in the Big Ten opener for Ohio State. The number two team in the nation shoots 61 percent. And how about beyond the arc? 13 of 19 from three-point range. 85-67 is your final. The Buckeyes move to 14 and 0 on the season. Sports Center will have more on this game. This has been a presentation of ESPN. We send it to Bob Picozzi and Len Elmore for Seton Hall and Cincinnati. Guys. We welcome those of you who have been watching